Throwback Thursday. This is another one of my I have a vision but not a plan. You guys seem to indicate that you really, really enjoyed that. Today I am working with Prima's Lavender Collection, which came out in 2017. I still have a bunch of this paper left. And um, I've been kind of cleaning, straightening the studio. That's an ongoing forever process. And I found some chipboard pieces and this and that. And I thought, okay, I kind of had a thing come together in my mind. So we'll start. I started by making a five and a quarter by eight card base with a half inch spine. And the way I do this is I cut my paper widths from eight and a half inch by 11 paper. Then I overlap and join them and then score in the spine. And I've gone ahead and lined this just to strengthen it with some um, really pretty, almost periwinkle cardstock. So then to cover this, I cut up some pieces of this lavender paper. And this is, I wanna say it's five and an eighth. Yeah, this piece is five and an eighth by six. And then I went into the 12 and 12 and I cut a strip. This is about, you can see how I joined this on the back, right? Uh, this is about three inches, and then I just trimmed along the top, and I inked the edges with Ranger Distress Oxide in Dusty Concord, which I forgot to get along here. Let me get that real quick. Then I stitched this up on my sewing machine, uh, just along the sides, just a simple straight stitch, just to kind of frame everything. Took a piece of this crocheted lace, glued this down over the joint where these two patterned papers come together. So that's where we're at right at this moment. Now I'm gonna bring in some of this Journey twine. This, you can get this from Spellbinders. Um, and I'm just gonna wrap this a few times. And note how I'm leaving a long edge here. You'll see why in a moment. I just wanna wrap this a few times. And then, and I, I apologize, everything is already blooming here in North Carolina, so I've got a little bit of an allergy thing going on. Um, it's gorgeous. The cherry trees are blooming, the daffodils are up, um, my plum tree is in full bloom, hyacinths are up, um, and the trees are all getting that feathery sort of look that they get right before spring. So you can see I tied a knot here and I've got these two long pieces and then I went into my stash and I found a couple of silver charms. These are from the Funky Junkie Boutique. This really pretty silver heart. And I know this has rose gold, but I like mixed metals. So I'm just going to, I put one on one string, one on the other. And we're just gonna tie a knot here and then tie a bow. So there's my knot and there's my bow. Now you can save this extra string that's left over. It's great for threading buttons. Um, you can actually use it to string another little charm on on another piece if you need to. So even though I left the tails long, um, it's not gonna go to waste. I will use it somewhere on something. So that is that. And I just think that's so pretty like that. Now, here's where I had a lot of fun. I'm gonna set this aside for a moment. I found these chipboard pieces. I think these are from Lazaro Love. They had sent me a box, goodness, ages ago. And these are some pieces that were in the box. And I love this dress. It is just so sweet. But how do you cover this with paper? Um, and I didn't want to just paint it white. So what I did was I took some Versamark ink and tapped it all over. Then I heat embossed with Stampendous Aged Ivory Embossing Enamel. And that's what created that sort of ivory and gold speckled look. Then I came in, because it was a little stark looking, and I spritzed it lightly, lightly with some of my Tattered Angels Mist. I've had this forever. I was on their team, oh goodness knows, maybe, maybe as much as 10 years ago, I don't know. 
Anyway, this lavender field, but you could use any kind of glimmer mister spray that you have. And I just spritzed it lightly. And then I took, I came back in with the Distress Oxide and I just kind of inked, just kind of brushing along the edges because I wanted to define it a little bit, but I didn't really want it um, like smudgy. I just wanted it to have almost like an outline on it. And then I came in, I know this is a lot of steps, but it really goes a lot. You can almost do it faster than you can tell it. And then I came in with my Mr. Bottle and I misted it. And it made all these wonderful little streaky, puddly, um, kind of impressionistic spatters on it. And then I dried it with my heat gun. And what happens is the embossing powder opens up again and the color sinks down in so it's permanent which is really cool so this um tag was also in that bundle and this is see this is what the aged ivory the shabby aged ivory embossing powder looks like just all on its own and this is what it looks like after i treated it so i just did the tops and bottoms of this and i cut a panel of this beautiful foiled paper and we're just gonna glue this onto our tag. And, you know, there's no way I was going to measure around those little filigree pieces, um, which are beautiful, but not doing it. So I'm just gonna press this down, so pretty. And you can see you've got pinks, lavenders, and the rose gold, so it's a very soft, shabby look that we have here. Now I'm going to wrap this top and bottom with some more of my twine. Only this time I'm just going to um, adhere it on the back. I'm not going to tiny bows or anything. I need to sharpen my scissors. So let me cut another length of this for the bottom and I'll show you my little sneaky trick for making this super easy to do. So just a couple of pieces and I don't know, I mean, this is maybe, I don't know. I'm really um, generous with trims because I love texture and I love adding them. I love adding it to my pieces. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna bring in some score tape. And I'm just going to put score tape along here and score tape along here. And that's going to catch the loose ends. So we're going to be fine. Peel this off. Bring in one piece of my string. And I'm going to actually start on the back. And see, this is going to catch it. And then I'm just going to wrap around. And it just gives it a little bit more of a finished look. Whoops. I'm trying to get this straight. Although it doesn't really matter. It's pretty overlapped. It's pretty if it's straight. It's just to um, add that little bit of finished look and texture. And then I'm going to go through my button stash and I'm going to find some little buttons or little pearls or something to go over these rounded tab areas because I think that would be really beautiful. And I haven't done that yet because, true story, since this is Throwback Thursday and I'm a little more conversational with you, I went over to look for trims and I get distracted by my ribbon um, hanger and had to stop and go. <laughs> clean things up. It, OCD is a terrible thing. All right, this is another doily, and this was really fun. I love to play with embossing powders, and I don't know if you have any. Um, if you want to kind of stick your toe into the water of mixed media, I highly, highly, highly recommend embossing powders. They're one of the easiest tools to play with. They're fairly inexpensive, and they always work great. So again, I just tapped this doily, and this is what it looked like when it started with my Versamark. And then I heat embossed it with um, Distress 
tattered rose embossing powder, which is just, as you can see, it's kind of a shabby mix between lavender and pink. And heat embossed that, let it cool a little bit, tapped it again lightly with Versamark and came in with Seth Apter Vintage Bees Wax Baked Texture. This actually has bits of um, encapsulated wax in there. So it gives it um, a really cool finish. And then I wanted to add just a bit of shimmer because I kept putting it up against this and going, oh, it needs to pop a little bit more. So then I took Seth Apter um, Ancient Amber Baked Texture, which is one of my favorites, and just like sprinkled it over it like sugar and heat embossed it again, and it turned out so pretty. I hope the camera is picking this up for y'all to see. There's all these different um, gradations in color and texture. So I'm just gonna add some embossing, uh, some of my Dry's Clear Adhesive along the edges of this very lacy, very delicate little doily. This was also from Lazaro Love. And I'm gonna put this up toward the top and let it hang off this side just a little bit and press that down. So there's that. And now I can bring in my beautiful dress. Look how pretty that is. And I'm gonna take some waist packing material to put under the skirt. Oops, too big. All right, just so that this will sit level. And I wanna glue this down right about here so that you can see the doily but the dress kind of stands on its own and I'm going to take a couple of more pieces of this chipboard this is actually a priority mailbox which I know is hilarious stick it under there I want to make sure it doesn't show Pressing this in place. All right, I'm just going to hold that in place for a second so that adhesive will catch. It catches pretty quickly. And then look how pretty this is on the cover of our card. So you can kind of see all these shaped bits above it, but then you've got this really pretty shabby chic dress here and I'm going to have to I think I'm going to have to use my um, hot glue gun to get this to really stick the way I want it to and my chipboard pieces underneath have shifted so I'm just using my scissor point to push those where I want them to be the one thing about embossing powder is it does kind of resist adhesive a little bit. So that can sometimes be a little bit challenging, but this is good adhesive and it will eventually set up. But this is how this is gonna look. So I'm gonna play with this a little bit more, figure out what happens next and I'll be back. All right, so I think I'm ready to add some more to this cute little card. You can see I, add, I added some prills with my, uh, in, into these little places along the edges, just to kind of add a little texture and color. And then I went through my ephemera pack and found some bits and bobs and some flowers, and we're just gonna put this together. This is a little ephemera piece. I just wanna tuck it down in here to, um, I just like the way that adds just a little touch of gold and a little bit of different pattern there. And then I have a little butterfly. I'm gonna wait on that actually. 
Uh, let's start with flowers. Always my favorite. These are from Renee Bouquet's shop. I um, want to add some of these. I'm trying to find a good starting place. I think right here, maybe. Put some hot glue down. And then I've got some little pieces here that are going to kind of stick up above our leaves. And then our big rose here. If you haven't checked out Renee's shop, you really should. It's pretty, it's pretty remarkable what she has. I'm going to do like this here. I want this to curve around. And then I have um, these two small uh, flowers here. I just thought these matched the color of this paper collection really well. Now this is one of the overlays from the, oops, we got some hot glue on that, from the um, lilac ephemera. They have um, these clear overlays and there are paper pieces that these go over, but I thought this looked really cool. I'm gonna use my Dries Clear Adhesive and this will disappear when it dries. And look, now we've got like a pattern on our skirt. And I just thought that was really cool. I love the way that looks. See that? Neat. Very excited about that. And then this leaf. Oops, I need some more hot glue. This leaf is going to tuck right in here. Let me get that in there. There we go. So we've created this pretty curve. That's always a really nice thing to do. And I know I've got some glue in here that I need to clean up. I may just put some prills on top of that, um, or I may hit it with the hot glue gun and melt it and pull it off. But um, I wanted this to curve. And then this is a little ribbon that I've tied. I'm not sure. I think it might be might be orchid checkerboard satin from really reasonable ribbon or it could be a different color um, there's so many different shades of purple but I will figure it out and I will link to it so that you can find it in case you have this collection in your stash and you want to copy this card for your own fun. All right, that looks really good. And then what I want to do is create right here a little cluster of our flowers right on the waistband. So pretty. And then just one little rosebud to go right on top. Of our bow right here. Pretty pretty. Then now we can figure out where we want this butterfly to go and we may not want them at all. Sometimes I pull these pieces and I'm not really sure if I'm going to use them or if they add or if they subtract. I kind of play around with um, You know, moving things around, testing out where it looks good, if I think it looks good in a spot. I love to have text, though. I don't know why that's so important to me, but I really love to have text on the front of a card. Otherwise, to me, it looks kind of naked. So I'm going to stick roses right here. And straight is always good. I was thinking of putting dance down here, but... I kind of don't like that. I wish you guys were here so I could ask you, what do you think? Um, 
I don't know. I've got some of these little squigglies. I make these, if you have one of these picks, these are just the stems off the flowers and you just wrap them around the tip here and it makes these really pretty little squigglies. So I'm gonna stick some of these in here. I think I like this down here. I was thinking up here, but I actually like it better down here. So I'm just gonna kind of stick it right here. I am gonna add a little bit of string right there, but other than that, I think I'm good. I think that's really pretty. I'm very pleased. I'm gonna put a little um, chipboard back behind here so this doesn't get bent. But there you go. That's how I kind of put this little mixed media number together. I'm going to finish the inside and I'll be back to show you. Okay, guys, you can see I finished this up and have it all mounted to the card base that we made. I just added a few prills, just to add a little more texture and interest. And um, everything else is the same. And then on the inside, I turned this into a double folio. So up here, on the top, I did a little accordion fold folio, and this has um, five panels on each side. And of course, the back panel is glued to the paper, but this is really good size. This is four and three quarters by, I believe it was seven and a half. And I did a little collage here on the cover, and then there's photo map places on the inside. So pretty. And these little pull tabs are cute. And the way I did this was I joined two eight and a half by 11 sheets of my uh, lavender paper. You can see there's the joint right there. And then I just measured over and scored every little bit and then accordion folded. So they fold into each other like this and attach here, so that's pretty easy. And I think this would be a really pretty folio for a bridal shower or a prom pictures, or even Mother's Day would be pretty. And then down here, I have a little waterfall folio. And these are four and three quarters by four and a half. And I believe there's eight panels here. And then when you get to the bottom, there's a little pocket with a little journaling folio here for you can write memories in. So that is that. I like that it's a folio on the inside. It's kind of just a fun, whoops, and my pearls hadn't quite dried yet. Sorry about that. But mostly what I wanted you to see was how to do the chipboard in a different way. That was really fun for me. I enjoyed that and I hope you did too. Very quickly before I sign off, if I could ask you guys a favor, uh, this doesn't cost you anything and it only takes a second. If you would take the time to like this video below, it, it encourages YouTube to share my channel with other people and it helps my channel to grow. So I would really appreciate that. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, I would love to have you along for the journey. All right, guys, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. I'm going to go get my craft on. Bye.